can't afford a brand new home and don't necessarily like the idea of living in a high rise. So over the next couple of months, we're going to show you what a lot of Australians already know, that granny flats and dual occupancy are a great option. So whether you're looking to downsize or you need to house a family member or you just want to create a second income, no matter what your budget, we're going to have all your options covered. So tonight, it's Granny Flat 101. Life keeps getting happening in suburbs right across Australia. Actually, it's been happening for a while now, but recently it has been going through the roof. I'm talking about granny flats. Now, lots of people are thinking about them and even more are building them. But why and how and what do you need to know to join the granny flat party? Kenzie and Melissa are about to embark on their own granny flat journey. They're building one on their property as a home for Melissa's mum, Kathy, and her partner, Andrew. So I was going to ask you the inspiration behind the granny flat, but I have a feeling she's in your arms. <laughs> yes. That's right, yeah. Who's this? So this is Evelyn, and um, she's six weeks old. Wow. And, um, yeah, we, we absolutely love having her around, but obviously looking forward to mum looking after her once the granny flat's built. So it's a, it's a big decision. Was there any uh, hesitation from you at all, or were you just ready to be as close as you could to your um, granddaughter? It, it wasn't hesitation, but we yeah. recently um, retired, so we thought that would be the great idea mm -hmm. to um, be near my um, children, my grandchild. What were your requirements then? Um, we, went, we wanted to have a, a little, little cosy house, and then that really appeared to us. And Andrew is an artist, he paints, so we can do that on the, on the porch. So that was, that was really our aim. Time to enjoy yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we are trying to enjoy it. So Kenzie, you've obviously done the comparisons. How, do, how does the cost of a granny flat compare? Um, essentially, we'll be building a two-bedroom granny flat. Um, in the price range of 150 to 200,000. Wow. So in comparison to something else like a two bedroom apartment, it's about 20% of the cost. The, the way the house prices are at the moment, it's a no brainer. Oh, we're excited to watch it all happen and unfold. Yeah, <laughs> so are we. <laughs> so what is a granny flat? Basically, it's a small self-contained dwelling either attached to or separate from an existing home. Maximum living space can vary depending on what state you live in, but say in New South Wales, for example, it's 60 square metres, similar in size to a two-bedroom apartment. Kenzie and Melissa are opting for a detached granny flat, sitting beside their house on a corner block. It'll have two bedrooms, two bathrooms, kitchen living area and a large front veranda. So each state and territory has different requirements and you will need to check with your local councils. But if you're thinking about a granny flat, there are a couple of boxes that you need to tick. So let's take New South Wales as an example because this is where Kenzie and Melissa live. The laws have recently changed. So if your block of land is bigger than 450 square metres and has a 12 metre frontage, in most cases you won't need a DA or development application. Now, you still will need to go through a private certifier just to make sure everything's above board. But what it will mean is that your project it will get green lit earlier and you'll be able to move forward with minimum fuss even quicker. Once you've decided you want to go ahead, the next decision you need to make is how you want to build it. Are you up for being an owner builder? Do you employ a builder to look after it or hire a specialist granny flat company to manage the whole process? Now, Kenzie and Melissa have gone for the latter, a specialist granny flat building company. Now, it is the more expensive option, and my one bit of advice to you would be this. If you are going to go with a specialist building company, make sure that you have done your research into what inclusions come with the build. Because once you have signed on the dotted line, any extras that you want to add after the fact, whew, you will pay for them. Different companies will have different inclusions. So make sure you get a full list because granny flats are no longer just a converted garage. They're a complete build. They help with housing availability and affordability. But make sure you know what you're paying for. I've got to say, I'm a little bit surprised. We have not had the greatest weather and I was half expecting just a slab to be down, but this is great. Is it getting exciting now you see it come together? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the walls are up and we're, we can see the end now, so it's, it's been really good. Kenzie and Melissa are building a granny flat for Melissa's mum and partner. They've chosen a specialist granny flat builder over a basic DIY option. And our finance expert Sarah Leslie has some great tips. 
For example, you might be able to separate your loan from your existing debts so that you can focus on paying off your non-tax deductible debt first. Because it's not just about getting the cheapest interest rate, it's also about making sure that you've got the right loan structure so that you can optimise any tax benefits you might be entitled to. And this is where a flexible lender can be important. So before you consider building a granny flat, investigate the tax situation. Also, decide how you want to manage the construction and be very clear on the different options. What was actually the final thing that got you guys over the line with actually going with a specialist granny flat building company? Um, I think because the company was local yeah. um, and they sort of covered everything and we were able to communicate with them what we wanted and they just sorted everything out for us. Another huge benefit of having someone to do everything for you is the speed. From the start of this build to completion will only take 15 weeks. And if you plan to rent your granny flat, the sooner it's finished, the sooner the money will start to come in. It's gone up so quickly we can start measuring and yeah. you know, looking at what furniture goes where and you know, it's a really exciting time. But there are some more decisions you'll need to make regarding the ongoing management of expenses. Whether you have relatives or a tenant living in the second dwelling, you'll need to consider whether you're going to have shared or separate water, gas and even electricity meters. And who is going to pay to maintain the yard? As always, regardless of who the parties are, whether it's family or not, it's always a great idea to have it all down in writing. By week seven of the build, the exterior is largely done. And in the next couple of weeks after that, the interior really starts to come together. Wow, it's inside where you can see the real changes taking place. I mean, the beautiful thing about a build like this is once you've got your roof on, everything can be done inside. So now we've got all the plaster up, the electricals in, tiling all throughout the house for ease of cleaning. In the final few weeks, the project really comes together as floors are finished, fittings are installed and big ticket items like the kitchen take shape. It all really does happen very quickly and after 15 weeks, the new place is looking brilliant. We've been following the Valtangi family as they head into the world of building a granny flat on their property. Jason's been helping with the landscaping, while Tara's lending a hand with the tough task of downsizing from their four bedroom home. Most of the furniture that Kathy and Andrew decided to keep from their old place will go into the bedroom. So that leaves me this main living area to play with. Now obviously this is a lot smaller than what they've come from. So this is going to challenge my downsizing skills. <laughs> Wish me luck. Being open plan, this space doesn't really have a focal point. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make one with Andrew's painting. So here above the dining table is where this painting will sit. And the great thing about it, it's really modern in its style. It's got this great white frame so it feels open, light and airy. It's filled with colour, so I'm going to use this as my styling inspiration for the whole space. Kathy and Andrew had a big round table at their last place and they absolutely loved it. So I think this is a much better choice. The reason being that when you do have a thoroughfare like this, when you know that people are going to be walking through a lot, you can tuck the table in closer to the wall. But when you know you've got guests around, mm -hmm. have a cup of tea, a meal, you can actually give yourself a bit more mm. space. But really, I can do yeah, that. See, there you go. I can do that. Didn't really do it. <laughs> Oh, this is it. This is the lounge. It's compact. I know. I know. Watch this. You know how short I am. One, two. That's pretty funny. That's with her gorgeous little legs. I could do it in. <laughs> Righty. Is it heavy? No, it's not too bad. I'll tell you what, I like the material. This it's good, isn't it? Do you know? I think when most people are choosing a sofa, especially for a small space, do you know the legs are one of the most important things to check out on a sofa in small space living? Because if the sofa comes all the way to the floor, it kind of takes up more space visually. Yeah. Whereas having just this little bit of height just makes it look lighter and airier in the room. So, so. the illusion of more space than you've actually got. looks good. Do you know what? It is tight. It's very compact. But when you sit down, that's fine. That's all you need. Oh, There's plenty of room. 
That's a way to watch the show. Better home, Friday night. Yeah. Denying the property market has changed dramatically in the last five years between foreign investment and lack of housing, it means the prices for homes has shot through the roof. Well, we recently showed you how a granny flat could be one solution for young families. In the second part of the series, we're showing you a step up from a granny flat, how much it'll set you back, and just who can build a dual occupancy. We are going to follow a build from start to finish, which means that you get to experience every stage along the way without spending a cent. Want to become a landlord but a granny flat is just too small? Well, we've got the next big thing. Recently, we showed you how you can build a granny flat for a fifth of the cost of an average house. But if a granny flat is not quite big enough, there's another option you might want to consider. Well, dual occupancies are also booming, whether or not it be a duplex right from the get-go or a freestanding house in the backyard. For some families, it makes perfect sense. So what is dual occupancy? Well, the laws differ from state to state. But in New South Wales, the maximum size for a granny flat is 60 square metres. So anything bigger is a dual occupancy. This block belongs to George and Maury, but they're about to give up their backyard so their son Rene and his young family can afford to build a home in Sydney. So George and Maureen, a beautiful location. How long have you been here? We've been here 34 years. 34, 34 years. years. So the decision then to do a dual occupancy, what was the thought process behind it? Well, I think first of all, uh, it's good to be able to share with, with your family. For Rene, Zoe and Jonah, uh, it's going to be good to be in or well, very close to the city and with the grandparents. George and Maureen's son Rene already works in the family business, which imports fine French food. Also, we will get some uh, rental uh, income yeah. and that's the, mainly the two reasons why we, we have done that. So it doesn't matter how you weigh it up, you look so at it's it. A win -win. It's a win-win. Win-win. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. If you put, say, a granny flat on there, obviously you could do that between 50 and 100, 150 yes. max. So yeah. what sort of price are you talking and looking at with your dual occupancy? Well, probably close to three, 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 350. 350 probably. Okay. Yeah. So it's a much yeah. bigger so financial investment. It is investment. a big investment. Yeah. Yes. Um, but we thought, well, you know, it certainly increases the value of the whole property, of course. So what does $350,000 get you in a dual occupancy dwelling? Well, this will be a three bedroom house with a kitchen, dining and two bathrooms, plus a workshop that George can use. Well, at least that's the plan. And all going well, it should only take about three months. For you, Renee, there must be some pretty amazing memories growing up here. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I grew up kicking a ball around in the backyard, riding my bike, you know, playing in the local neighbourhood with friends. It's always sort of been home in you know, some way or another, so yeah, we're very fond of the area. Having said that, you guys moved away from Sydney for a couple of years? Yeah, we did. We went to Brisbane. Yep. Uh, we both worked up there for, yeah, four years. Mm -hmm. uh, we travelled around the world, yep. um, and then we came back to start a family mm -hmm. and be with our family. Did you not consider maybe looking at what was available further out or in regional areas? Was that just not possible? We ab absolutely, absolutely we looked did. at it. Yeah. yeah, I think we, um, you know, we'd been there in Brisbane yeah. and we'd seen, you know, what it's like to live away from family. And Jonah just lights up when he sees his mummy and yeah. Peppy, you know, and that's just, it's too hard to, you, you know, you want to keep that. Within a few short weeks, the plumbing is done, the foundations are done, and already the flooring is going down. But because dual occupancies have tighter regulations, development applications and higher site costs, it hasn't all been plain sailing. Once you go through the DA process, it's no longer just signed off certified by, by someone and off you go. So we had a lot of other things to look at as well. We had floods, we had heritage problems. Removing these asbestos garden sheds cost a lot more than they anticipated. I had a background in construction and there were still plenty of things I got caught off guard with and you just think, yeah, wow, I never saw that coming yet. Now, are you guys starting to reach the point where you're starting to envision what it's going to be like and, yeah. and imagining yeah. what it's going to be like when you're living here? Absolutely. Each stage, it gets closer. And um, especially at this stage, I can really just imagine the whole family out on the balcony. Yeah. So, can't wait for it to be done. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. 
George and Maureen chose a specialist dual occupancy builder and they're over the moon they did because they've had someone to tackle all the extra dramas for them. You see, for so long you see it as a piece of paper, you know, yeah. plan on a piece of paper and you can't quite visualise it and then suddenly... Oh, it's very exciting, guys. It's really coming yes, along. Yes, really yes. exciting, you know, um, now that we can well, see it happening. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's all become good. real. Yes. Well, there's still a couple of months to go for this build, so we'll check back in to see how things take shape a little later. Plus, the journey to unlock the equity in your home continues. <laughs> With promises like that, we're going to let them get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier, we met the Puejbidi family, who were embarking on a dual occupancy project to help son René and his family get a place to call home. Now, if you're considering something similar, finance expert Sarah Leslie has some advice which might help you avoid any pitfalls. Every family has a different reason for building a dual occupancy home, but remember, if you are looking to earn some extra income by renting it out, you will have to pay tax on it. There are also immediate tax benefits to be had on the new investment, including claiming the interest on your loan and other associated costs such as maintenance, insurance and rates. This is a really tricky area, so make sure you get advice before making any decisions. Well, two months in and the frame is up and a home of their own is finally within reach for Rene and Zoe. We're really lucky and we feel like we've got a house that we can go into. Well, it seems like only yesterday we were staring at a large mud pit and suddenly, with the frame up, the brickwork has commenced. Maureen and George have chosen bricks that match the original house in a more modern style, but it's important to check your preferred bricks aren't an extra cost. Now, even though the new house is for Rene, Zoe and Jonah, there's a little something for George too. His very own workshop is part of the new build. He can't wait till it's finished. He even sent me a video message. Hi, Joe. As you're not here today, we wanted to show you the progress on the building the house. And uh, as you can see, the walls are already, th already there. The roof is finished. And the most interesting thing, it's inside. OK, Maureen, we go inside. Joe, this is my men's cave. Plenty of shelving over here, over here. I'm going to have bench, my band saw, timber, air conditioning in the workshop. Isn't that fantastic? My dream, my dream. Hi, Joe. Hi, hi again. I'm going to show you the rest of the house. This is the first bedroom. A good size. And this will be the second bedroom. This is the dining room area. It's really taking shape, so you'll have to come and see it for yourself. Okay. See you, Joe. Bye. Well, if you've ever built your own home, you'll know once the roof is on, things start to move very fast. Watching the plasterers finish the place in one day is incredible. Then, between the painting, the tiling, and the installation of the kitchen, the final stages seem to be completed almost daily. There's even a back deck now. But before it's revealed to Rene and Zoe, what do George and Maureen think? Finished product. Here, Here it is. is. Oh, it's Here lovely. we are. Lovely. Wow. Uh, it's huge. It oh, is. It is. Huge. It yeah. is yeah. huge. But it wow. looks great. Wow. Look, it looks great. Fantastic size kitchen. I yeah. love the light floor. Yeah. Yes. And just the fact you can open it up and you yeah. see green and light and sunlight, sun yes. all around. The inside looks absolutely beautiful. We've still got a little bit of work to do outside. Outside, yeah, yeah there's still yes. things to be done for sure. OK, yeah, yeah. I've roped in a bit of a favour. Come yeah. on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Just watch the holes as we jump across here. Hey guys. Hello. Jason, wow. you're just who I was looking for. <laughs> Come and meet Maureen and George. Hi Maureen, Hi, how are you? Hey guys. How are you guys? Hey, 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 I'm not going to give you a kiss. Oh, 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 beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> look, we just had a look oh, inside wow. and it's fabulous. Doesn't make yeah, sense. We're thrilled. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's really looking great. Unfortunately, they are too close, you know. <laughs> we can see them. Yeah, I hate it uh, when the family's morning, too close. Morning, afternoon, <laughs> evening. Uh, <laughs> What's well, the saying about good neighbours, good fences? Well, it doesn't have to be that severe because it's not neighbours, it's family. Yeah. But privacy screens. So yeah. 
raised garden bed, lots of edible food that both of you can wow. enjoy, wow. Mm. and then a screen across the back so you get that privacy you want. Sounds wow. great. Wow. Sounds wonderful. That's fantastic. And best of all, you Thank two you. don't have to do it. No. Jace has got the team here. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll, I'll spare a kiss for you when I'll you're finished. Awful. Yes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we promise it's like that. We're going to let them get back to work. <laughs> Jason's ideas sound fantastic, and that's coming up. George have actually unlocked the equity in their backyard with their plans for a dual occupancy. But this is way more than a granny flat. I mean, check out the size of this place alone. And now it's up to Jason and the gang to finish off the landscaping and create a privacy screen between the two homes. I've got a couple of simple tips when you're working with tree to pine building little walls like this. Rather than getting a tape measure and measuring a thousand times to work out where your posts go, lay out your sleepers. You're going to get your holes in the right spot. For the ones in the middle, lay out a second course and work out where those holes are. All the timber I'm using for the retaining wall and for the posts that are going to hold up my screen are H4 treated pine. H4 means that they can be buried in the dirt and they're not going to rot away. It's important because this stuff's dressed, it comes in plastic. When you're taking it off, just use a Stanley knife ever so lightly. If you just drag it over and make a tiny little scratch, it'll still tear on that spot, but it won't scar the timber. I'm painting on a bench because it's a heap easier painting this way than this way. Your arm gets real tired real quick. And I'm painting it black. Now, normally black fades away to nothing, so I hope it does, and that'll make my screens the feature. While we can see the back of the wall, it's a good time to explain a few things. Lots of people prefer the paling side of a paling fence rather than the rails. And lots of people don't like the look of the front of this retaining wall because you've got these posts sticking out in front. Well, if you have a look at the back, it's so flat and one-dimensional that it doesn't look right. And the post, well, it holds a lot of sins. Like here, where the two sleepers butt up to each other, one's a millimetre or two thicker and they're not exactly cut straight. But when you've got the post here, you can't see any of that. And also, it's stronger. By the time we fill this with soil, all the pressure is going to be out, which is going to hold these sleepers in place even more. So if the screws fail, there's nowhere for them to fall. If the post was on the inside and the screw failed and there was pressure pushing it out, well, your retaining wall would end up on the ground. So we're going with a decorative screen. We're using OxyShield garden screen. So you got to get the privacy, but you also get the pattern. What Scott's doing there is drilling into our timber post. And if you see on the timber post we've got a bit of tape on it, we're just using that as a guide so we don't have to pick up a tape measure again and make sure we're the same thickness in at the top as we are at the bottom. Best thing with a screen like this as a fence is you see a big change real quick. Let the paint dry, have a cup of tea, and we can start the plant. If you've had big renos at your place, built something like this granny flat or had the landscapers in, I still reckon it's a great idea that when it comes to planting, get you and your family to do it. It's a great way to connect with the space and feel like you've really achieved something. So I'm going to invite all these guys in. Come on, George. Come on, Zane. Renee. Come on, Maureen. Come on, Jonah. Let's now, go, this Jonah. is going to be a great <laughs> space for both families, but I think it's going to be especially important for this little man. What about yummy strawberries? Do you like strawberries? Yes. Yeah, I like strawberries. <laughs> and we plant them all along the back of the garden and they can spill over and you can eat them all the time. Perfect. All right, let's get busy. OK, you can do it. You can, you do, can it. do it. You can do it. Even if they get no fruit or veg out of this garden, this little man's going to be better for the experience. I reckon we will. So, Zoe, it's been a yes. while since we've seen you. How's the whole experience been? It's been really wonderful really rewarding and incredibly exhausting. <laughs> and Renee, what's been the best thing? Oh, the best thing has just been seeing it take shape, I guess, and just all, all your sort of dreams and ideas become a reality. What advice would you have for anyone else who's thinking about doing something like this? Uh, I think buckle down and hold on. <laughs> and then um, and plan, like measure all of your furniture and work out, you know, pretty much to the millimetre what you need and what you don't need. It's only 13, 14 weeks to build, but it's a couple of years to come up with the design and get yeah. the space right yeah, and get everything. Yeah, we definitely 
did a lot so of research. There's a lot of homework, and, and but yeah, that's what you got to do, I guess. So it's an edible garden, but that doesn't mean it can't be pretty either. We're putting in plenty of flowers. Now I've got pansies, ballas, and snapdragons here. And the good thing about all of them is they look great. They're going to attract the bees with their bright colours, but they're also edible. So what I've got here, I've put my citrus, my lemon and my Tahitian lime in, but underneath it I've planted the things that aren't going to grow down into the ground, like carrots, onions and beetroot. I've got parsley, that'll last me a couple of seasons. Rosemary will last me a fair few years. Basil and some flowers. So I can replace things slowly without damaging the root system of the citrus and putting it into shock, but I'm still using above and down on the dance floor. And with a little bay tree in the corner, now these guys unpruned will get to 15 metres tall, which is nearly as tall as the next door neighbour. I don't want that. I want it to get to about two metres tall. So if they're using it in their cooking, that's one way to prune it. If it's starting to get too leggy, they can give it a haircut, fill the space, give me a bit of privacy here from the park, but also still be able to see through it a little bit so they can enjoy the space. Well, I've handed over the hose, so it's officially your garden. Aww. Congratulations on Thank your you green plant slash home. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for having me. George. You? Zoe. Thank you. You're in charge, all right? Uh -oh. What about a high That's five dangerous. for Jason? High five, brother. See you, mate. Good luck Jason. with the garden. Jason. Bye. And my kiss. Oh, sorry. We're very <laughs> European. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Coming up, how is life for Renee and Zoe in their new home? He's in heaven. <laughs> He's literally in heaven. Yeah. We've been following the dual occupancy build for Renee and Zoe and Renee's parents, George and Maureen. Now, Jason's done a great job in the garden here, actually providing a little bit of privacy between the two homes. But for Renee and Zoe, they have finally moved in. Now, we've spruced up the place. Let's go check it out. Oh, wow. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. This oh. looks gorgeous. I know. Can you believe it? Oh, I can't believe it. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Are you happy with it? Overwhelmed and uh, it's just a dream come true. It's amazing. Oh, that's Beyond happy, I'd say. Beyond happy. Beyond happy. I'm really loving your choice of flooring. Thank you. We spent a lot of time yeah. thinking about the floor and the bricks. Yes. Things that you can't change easily. Yeah. Okay. yeah you can always repaint a wall. You can change a bench top. Yeah. You can't change the bricks. Yeah. True. But I think also in a small house, the essential part is good storage. Yeah. Yep. There's our grown-ups bedroom, yep. which is so lovely. We have previously had desks and stuff like that. It's so lovely to just have a bit of a sanctuary. The mix of the old and new yeah. works perfectly. Yeah. And then we've just got a baby's room, yep. which is Jonah's room at the moment. Look at your beautiful room. Come, come, come here. Come Look in here. here. Come, come here. What, what are you going to show me? What next? What? But. <laughs> oh, your big boy room. Look at it. And this is going to be your big boy bed. There he goes, there he goes. Oh, I just love how this all opens up. Yeah. It's very relaxing. There's lots of space for lots of people to have lots of fun. How much does Jonah love it? He's, yeah, <laughs> he's in heaven. This is he's his face. Hey. Oh. <laughs> so all the hours and the planning and yes, it's all been worth it. It has. Oh, yeah. by far and away. I'm just glad we're at this end now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, George's workshop is getting a workout too. But how do George and Maureen feel about the whole experience? It's been really great, absolutely great. We're delighted that it's all worked out so well. Yep. And it's lovely having them near, so near. How have you managed to manoeuvre it so that all those boundaries are actually respected? Financially, we consulted our financial advisor yep. and he drew up a, a plan for us. Mm -hmm. And um, Renee and Zoe were involved in that as well as our other son as well. Yeah. The, the key is to just talk about it and just be open and have those conversations from the outset and, mm. and everyone's on the same page. Yeah. And just keeping it fair for everyone and just making a plan so you can account for all sorts of circumstances yeah, as that's well. It. What, what about then um, as far as privacy? We wouldn't go to the place without the uh, knocking on the door, and uh, there is only one little issue. It's a grandson. Ah, I don't know. Ah, I don't know. We try and call or, you know, <laughs> knock on the door before we come over, but he literally opens up the blinds and says, Mevi, Pepe, morning, Pepe. It's really cute. Ah, I don't know. Hi, Mevi, Pepe. 
it's just gorgeous yeah. to see him in the window there. It's, it is. Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit loud from inside. It's very noisy inside. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a privilege for us to be able to just sort of sneak in and have a look around. Oh, and thank, follow. You. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the well, It's a real pleasure for yeah. us, yeah. too. Oh, that's, that's good. good. That's All right. Well, now you have to say goodbye to Australia. So we'll see you next week with more Better Homes and Gardens. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, you're gorgeous. Uh,